Acts chapter 16. I like that son of Josh. He much better since he struck me blind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Acts I want you to think about the missionary field. I thought about a, we went to a meeting over at Clear Creek one evening and there was a man there that was talking about his little New Testament. They used to issue them in the army and he said he was in a foxhole and all kinds of things going on around him. And he said he started reading that New Testament and he gave his heart to the Lord in a fox eye. Yeah, God knows where you are today. God knows what you need today. So no matter what you're going through or what you think you're going through, I want you to understand, God has got you if you just turn to Him. That's all you have to do. Just turn to Him. He knows your needs before you ask. And he said, ask that you should receive, seek that you should find not, that it may be open unto you. Acts chapter 16, verse 9. Well, let's start at verse 7. After they were come to Massa, they essayed to go to Bethany, but the Spirit suffered them not. And as they passed by Massa, Massa came down to Troy, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision immediately, I like the word immediately, he endeavored to go unto Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosened from Troy, we came to straight course to Samathka, and the next day to Neapolis. And from thence to Philippi, which is a chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in the city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attained unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there, and she can stain us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you've bestowed in our lives and each and every home that's represented here today. But Lord, somebody out there on Facebook is in a desperate situation. They don't know the Lord. They don't know the peace that God can bring to them. They don't understand why people come to church and worship like they do, and they're seeking for answers. Lord, open their heart today and let them find out exactly what they need. And let them do this. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm lost and I need a Savior. And I need you to come into my life and change my life and give me that deep, settled peace. If you will pray a prayer similar to that, on your knees calling upon God, He will save you today. Yes. So Lord, today, open hearts across this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. And amen. amen. You may be seated. So Apostle Paul, started out as Saul the destroyer. <laughs> Turned out that he needed a change in his life too. So on the road to Damascus, Jesus met him on the path and said, now this is as far as you're going. I want to tell people that 
You can only go so far against God's will. And that's a dangerous place to be, I'm telling you, a dangerous place to be. So turn your life to Jesus and surrender your life to Him and let Him do what He needs to do in your life. And here's Apostle Paul. He took on Silas because Barnabas didn't want to go with him. So Paul was laying and thinking about the Lord, meditating on Him, which we ought to be doing. And all of a sudden, he gets a vision. Somebody in Macedonia needs help. Bad. They're in Troy right now. That's 150 miles across the sea to Philippi. So he's got to figure out, you know, we don't see all these details that, that happens. He's got to find a ship that's going 150 miles to take him over to Macedonia. But he's determined to go. If God's people would get bullheaded and determined and say, I'm going to do God's will no matter what the world thinks about it, this world would go back to God and we'd be saved by God's amazing grace. I mean, really washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. These two people, it don't give Silas a lot of credit here, but Silas had to go along what Paul did. When you get a vision, when you get something that God is speaking to you to do, you need to follow through with it because Amen. you don't know the outcome. God's got you blinded right now, but you will see once you obey God and begin to do what God wants you to do. Verse 16 says, It came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. Now you can get online and you can listen to a soothsayer that will tell you your fortune if you want to do that. Don't do it. That's my word. Don't do it. There are all kinds out there. This is a, a form of a python. The way a python would take its uh, thing that it's captured and it would slowly get around it and squeeze on it until it squeezes all the life out of it. That's the way a soothsayer does. Oh, they'll tell you you're the finest person in the world. You can do this and you can get through all these things. But leave it alone. I'm telling you, there's too much out there. There's too much absolute filth out there in this world that's trying its best to tire down the church and the people of God and to keep them from doing what they need to do. We need to hold on to what we've got. Thank God for the saving grace of Jesus Christ that keeps us right where we need to be. We think we do that sometimes. We think, oh, I can do this. No, you can't. It takes the power of God. Can you play a guitar like Virgil Lawson? Huh? I can't. But thank God He can. Somebody can pick up the slack if we'll commit ourselves to the will of God. It's that simple. Praise God. And there came followed Paul and Silas and crowded these men and servants of the Most High God which show us the way of salvation. She don't mean a word of it. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, not to her, but to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Man, we don't know what God has got planned for our life right now. We're happy right now. We're in good shape right now. And we're going through this life, but we don't know what's coming. We don't know what we're going to face. But what we better know is we better hold on to Jesus as He holds on to us. And we better be close to Him because situations come, they rise. I know you've seen them. And so we've got to hold on to what we've got. So it took away their meal ticket away from these people. And when the magistrates saw what had happened, and the game was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them unto the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Man! <laughs> I like it when we trouble the devil. I like it when we make him so mad 
that He can't stand to be around us. That's what we need to do. We need to be so mad at the devil that he don't want to stay around us because we've got somebody that walks with us, that keeps us, that's there with us all the time. Lord, sometimes we think, I'm just so pitiful and I'm going through so much. Why don't somebody... And if we could just look around and see the arms of Jesus. Just, Amen. I'll, be, I'll be there if you just let me. But if you try to do it by yourself, go ahead. But I'm here. I'm right here. Sometimes we get some bullheaded for the wrong direction. We need to get bullheaded for Jesus Christ because He's the only hope we've got. I'm saying He's the only hope we've got. Yes. We've got to lean on Jesus and let Him hold to us and keep us through these storms that we go through. We can't make it by ourselves. So they took Paul and Silas, tied him up, put him to a whipping post, and the Jews are allowed to beat them 39 times. 39 times. We ain't been through that. We ain't had one strike put on us. I remember my grandmother, I sliced her one day, and she run me down across the field, and she whipped me all the way back to the house. And I remember them stripes. But you remember when you've been through a hardship. You remember when things have been so desperate in your life that you didn't know how you were going to get through the next day. You remember them things. But thank God for them things. Sometimes we need smack down. Sometimes we need to hit the bottom. Sometimes we need to realize that we're not in control. But God is in control. He holds our whole life in His hands. He's the one that keeps us. He's the one when we're down and out and we think we can't go no further. He's the one that reaches down and gets a hold of us and says, Get up. I've got you. I've got you. Thank God for the power of Almighty God. Thank God that we've got something to hold us when we are weak. And I mean, thank God. So they took Paul and Silas, beat them. Their clothes now is sticking to their back. The stripes are bleeding and they're hurting all over. So they're going to take them and they're going to put them in the very bottom of the dungeon. Get them out of our sight. We don't want nothing to do with them. If the world could tell you the truth, and they won't, they'd say, at Victory Church, get them out of our sight. We're sick of the way they sing. We're sick of the way they pray. We're sick of the way they act. Get them out of our sight. But, but let me tell you what God says. We ain't going nowhere. Yes. We're about where we're going to be. Yes. And we're going to keep on. Yes. And if you're lost out there and you're dying and you have no hope, call upon Jesus yes. before it's too late. Yes. Because yes. you cannot make it by yourself. Yes. So they took Paul and Silas and they put them in the lower part of the dungeon and they put their feet in stocks. You can't use the bathroom with your feet in stocks. You can't get up and get food. In that dungeon, I can imagine, there's rats running all over the place. Any food that would be brought in there, them rats would get the most of it if you didn't reach and get it real quick. We've not been in a situation like that ourselves yet. But thank God, we don't know what's coming tomorrow. We know that we've got Jesus and Paul and Silas knew beyond a shadow of doubt that they had God in their life and they was not going to yield one iota to anybody. They were going to hold their ground. Church, it's time that we hold on with everything in us. What we've got is God Almighty. Hold on to it. Cherish it and keep it close to you. We're going to need it. We're going to need it. I'm telling you, we're going to need it. So Paul and Silas, in them stocks, with their feet in stocks, rats ran all over the place, no food, no way to use the bathroom, their clothes stinked, they're sticking to their back where they've been beat for 39 stripes, and they're bleeding so bad. We get so upset if we have to have one little surgery and we have to have something done we get to growling and complaining and saying, Lord, Lord, 
Why has this happened to me? Yeah. Sometimes it puts us in a place where we might be a witness to somebody else and we don't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> the surgeons has to be witnessed to. Yes. The ones with the scalpel has to be witnessed yes. to. And if you don't do it, who's going to do it? Right. Huh? Thank it? God. So I want you to think about Paul and Silas for a minute. I want you to think how that they are in such a turmoil. Their feet are in stock. <coughs> They've been beat 39 stripes. They're bleeding so bad it's running down their garments and they're sticking to their back. They ought to be in there, they ought to say, oh God, I'm, I've been treated awful. I've been treated so bad. But that wasn't what they done. Paul said, Silas, let's pray a little prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're in this dungeon, but I know that according to what you laid in my mind, we're here for somebody. So Lord, we're going to stay right here and be patient yep. and wait and see what you've got to do. Yep. He said, well, amen. He said, now Silas, let's praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Yes. And they, start, they started praising the Lord. Yes. Their back is bleeding. They're in stocks. Rats are all over the place. They ought to be in deep despair, but they're not. They're praising Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Yes. Thank you for putting me where I am right now because somebody needs to hear this. Mm. And all of a sudden, about midnight, yes. comes a rumble. <laughs> all of a sudden, every jail door pops open. Yeah. Does everybody run out? <laughs> no. Listen to them two crazy people down the hall. <laughs> Listen to them. They're praising the Lord. Yes. They're singing to the glory of God. Listen to them. I believe when we get to heaven, all them that's in that prison that got saved, we'll see them over here. Oh, yeah. yes. Because yes. somebody got to them in time. Yeah. Some of them were probably on death row. Mm -hmm. But Paul and Silas Obey God. Yeah. Oh, it's so important that we yes. obey God. Yes. So important that we do what God sent us to do. So I can see there's a keeper of the jail and he's found asleep. He hears all the commotion and the jail doors clanging open and he jumps up and he gets a light and he gets a sword and he gets ready to kill himself. But Paul says, do thyself no harm. We are all here. Yeah. Every one yes. of them. All of them were yeah. still there. Mm -hmm. The doors were open. Why didn't they go out? Because they wanted to hear more about what Paul and Silas had to say. They wanted to hear the praise of God. Yeah. They wanted to hear the joy that they did not have. They wanted to know about the joy of Jesus. Let me tell you, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm telling you, we go through hardships sometimes too. We go through aggravating times and we feel like just kicking the cat. But I'm here to tell you, the peace of God that passes all understanding comes flowing back and says, you're mine. You're mine. The devil can't. The devil can't have you. You're mine. Oh, the joy of being saved is absolutely overweighs everything yes. that this world has. Amen. Thank God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You know what that guard did? He sprang in and brought a light and said, what must I do to be saved? He asked you that. What must you do to be saved? First, you need the conviction of God to speak to your heart. Alright, what's conviction? It's when the Spirit of the Lord is putting a song of praise on your life, lips or something that's tugging at your heart that you need to do something yeah. and you're sitting there holding it back and you need to turn loose. Yeah. Because when you kneel down and you call upon Jesus, I don't care how many millions of miles away He is, yeah. He can be there just like that yes. and He can save your soul. He can wipe all your sins completely away from you. Yeah. 
He can give you the precious blood of Jesus yes. Christ Same that way. absolutely does away with all the demon's power Amen. when you surrender to Jesus. Amen. It's fantastic. Amen. Fantastic what God can do. Yeah. So Paul and Silas apparently did not stay in jail. Apparently they came out. Oh, what about the prisoners? What about the prisoners? Maybe they were on death row. Maybe tomorrow they're going to be executed. But tonight, they're saved by God's amazing grace. Yes. They may have took them out. The Romans were cruel. Took them out and cut their heads off. But their soul went straight to Jesus. Yeah. Just like that. Amen. We don't know what we have to do. But I know we need to do whatever God has told us to do. We need to keep doing it. We're changing lives here in RJ, believe it or not. So let's keep doing what we're doing. Can I get somebody to give us a song? Let's open this song. Stand with me for just a moment, would you please? Heavenly Father, hey souls out there, dear God, that we don't see. And we don't know, dear Father. But I know you do. And Lord, as you receive this word, let it go to the very depths of your heart. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, please surrender your life to Jesus. You will never regret it. It's the greatest thing that you've ever done in your life. So today, surrender all to Jesus and let Him be the Lord of your life and you will find a perfect peace. Come to Jesus before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come to this altar. Turn your life over to Jesus. All to Jesus. All to
Now you would think that Lydia would be the one that Paul was sent to save. Turns out the only way that he could get where he needed to be was when he went into prison mm -hmm. and that guard got saved and his whole household yeah. and they took him out that night and baptized every one of them. Mm -hmm. Paul, had he not obeyed God, yeah. would have not been able mm -hmm. to save that family. Mm -hmm. So whatever God tells you to do, do it with everything it's in you because there's a purpose behind it. Yeah. When God says you do it, don't question it because you may never know why. But Amen. <coughs> Any final words before we come to a close? Can I ask y'all pray for Ariana? Uh, I've got it in my phone. I told her, I said, uh, I've been praying scripture over Jacob every night. And uh, uh, she said, and add this to it. And uh, she told me to pray this for her. And I said, you know, I told her I was going to tell the church, so y'all be praying. But the IMB paid for like the first year of her classes in Texas, and after that they're just paying like half half of it. Okay, and so she said, "Mom, I'm going to make it because she's working at there on campus and paying for her rent and everything in the apartment." But she applied for a scholarship, and she wants y'all to pray that she gets that scholarship. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, she needs that. And also, she said, pray for her relationship with Joshua, and that they do have God leads, and that she she's taking she's meeting with a Spanish teacher that actually teaches at the high school there, and uh, two days a week, and she's learning Spanish because she's working in an English speaking class at that church, and uh, she said it'd make it easier for her to communicate with them. And she went out with them yesterday to witness the people in the community and speak to speak Spanish. Because there's a lot of Spanish speaking people in Texas. <laughs> That's good. But anyway, and she said, I also had this mom. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt you, but she I've been meaning to tell you all this for a couple of weeks. She said, pray for her future job after seminary yeah. and that her for her ministry here in Texas, she said. Okay. Because she got two or three things and she discipled some people too. And uh, but anyway, and pray for Jacob. You know, yeah, always, and I pray, yeah. I pray for all y'all's kids. We got kids that we want to see, you know, yes, amen. Yeah, like they used to be. They, yes. sure they was raised in church. And so they need to, and I hang on to Proverbs 22 6, train up a child in the way that yeah. he should go. When he's old, he'll be a little And, uh, and I pray another scripture too, but that's the main yeah. one. <laughs> Uh, we all pray for, uh, I didn't go outside, um, they had texted, and uh, Christy and Jason's trying to find an ER close to where they're in Nashville somewhere, and she's got a kidney infection, and she woke mm. up this morning with a large knot on her jaw and her neck. Well. Um, so she said she she got scared, you know, normally you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. What do they always say? Will you have the church to pray? Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. She said, I know, Mom, he'll get our attention. I said, I've always said he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And we gotta have peace and know that, you know, we trust him. We trust him with our children, our grandchildren, our self, Amen. our job, our homes. I mean he we trust him. Yeah. And we've got to keep trusting him. Uh, I I trust God for everything. Every Amen. I'm going, to, Jesus. I'm going to put the word out as much as I can. I just want to do more. I'm not like Shirley Sum. Mm -hmm. I want to do more. And if I don't know what to do, we need to pray to the God in heaven and let mm -hmm. him show us and tell us what we need to do. Yeah. Because that, that's so vitally important. I know we work all day and we go home, we don't feel like doing much. But he will let us maybe allow something to be put on Facebook, a Bible verse that will reach out. I pray over every one of them that I put on there. It's going to touch somebody's heart and life. Yes, so ma let's just pray that we all get to that desire that we want to do more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our families might not be doing what we want them to do, but we know God. That's all you can remember is we know God. God's going to do what He's going to do because we have prayed yeah, to Him. Right. We've yeah. laid our request before Him. So I praise God this, this day. I praise Him. All right. Any other words? James, I need to get up and testify this morning. I thank God for watching over me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was going and running up to the dollar store, and I was singing. 
it is well with my soul. Amen. And all of a sudden, there was a car had passed another vehicle, and it was like right there. And it was just like, we both kind of just like that and missed each other. So I thank God. Thank you for watching. Amen. Yes. 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 They knew I needed them to be there, and uh, Linda was there, and my niece was, oh, no, I don't think that was before that was me. Anyhow, my niece was in at this time, and Linda was up there, and uh, she asked me something about who Linda was. I said, she's the, the person in our church that does everything when nobody else wants <laughs> and she said, we got Linda in our church. I thought, I can go one like mine. I didn't say that to her. <laughs> but Linda's the kind of person, you know, she's the go-to person that, that, that handles so many things. <clears throat> special. Okay, let's stand. Let's remember this request. for very important. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we come before you again this night, this day, we praise you. We glorify you. Go with each and every one of us, dear Father. Oh, we know the devil is going to try us. We know, dear Heavenly Father. But give us the strength to stand against everything that comes against us. And Lord, I know you hear these prayer requests, and I know you know what to do with them, and I know you will. So, Father, we trust you. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that as we leave this place, that we might continue to be the vessel that you need us to be, no matter what the distance is, help us to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.